in the early 1990s, there was a revolution in arcade gaming. The tired fighting genre was being revitalized. Games like Street Fighter and Fatal Fury were met with wild success, and a new age of competitive side-by-side -side fighting games was ushered in. Enter Midway, a key player in the arcade gaming markets with their take. The result was a bloody gore fest. Mortal Kombat is one of the most instantly recognized game franchises in existence with a fervent fan base. Over 30 years, the game has changed slightly with each release while retaining its core values that fans adore, expanding its roster of characters, storylines, and gameplay features. This is the evolution of Mortal Kombat games. Get over here, and let's get started. Back to the early 90s, and Midway, who had been on an upward trajectory since merging with fellow studio Williams at the end of the 80s. Programmer Ed Boon and visual artist John Tobias, two of Midway's leading game designers, used technology that took real photographs and blended them into the graphics to heighten realism, creating the game that would become a cult classic. Whilst it followed many of the gameplay features of its biggest rival, Street Fighter, like blocking and throwing of projectile attacks, it was the style they went for that set their game apart. Mortal Kombat was dark, it was gritty, and it was gory. Inspired by kung fu movies and over-the-top levels of violence, including the iconic fatality attacks that don't change the outcome of a match, but allow you to finish your already defeated opponent in the most gloriously violent way possible. The first game in the series launched in arcades in 1992 and was an overnight sensation. The appeal wasn't just the gore fest. The game had a compelling story and a small but iconic roster of fighters. However, it was almost a different story altogether. Mortal Kombat was originally going to be a licensed Universal Soldier game, but in the end, an original setting was created. The game unfolds on Shang Tsung's island in Earthrealm, where a crucial tournament is held across seven stages. Shang Tsung and Goro aim to control the Mortal Kombat tournament to doom Earthrealm. Goro has won nine consecutive tournaments in 500 years, and if he wins again, Earthrealm falls to Shao Kahn of Outworld. To stop this, a new generation of fighters must challenge Goro. Liu Kang ultimately wins, defeating Goro and Shang Tsung. Character backgrounds are glimpsed into biographies during the game with more details revealed upon completing the game with each character. The fighters players could select were Liu Kang, a Shaolin monk and the game's main hero, Johnny Cage, a Hollywood martial artist seeking to prove himself, Sonya Blade, a special forces officer pursuing the criminal Kano, Kano, a mercenary and wanted criminal, Raiden, a thunder god and Earth Realm's protector, Sub-Zero, a Lin Kuei ninja with freezing abilities, and Scorpion, a resurrected ninja on a quest for vengeance against Sub-Zero. His voice, including the instantly recognizable Get Over Here, was actually voiced by his creator, Ed Boon, in the original release. Each character came with their own set of moves, and each one had their own fatality they could use to finish off their defeated opponents at the end of a round. However, the game's success came with controversy. Parents across the US, where the game was getting major arcade playtime, were outraged that their kids could enter an arcade and have access to something so violent as long as they had a quarter to put in the machine. The outcome, federal lawsuits, congressional hearings, and the creation of something that the gaming industry had never seen before. The ESRB ratings organization was formed, and Mortal Kombat was the first game to be officially rated for mature audiences at MA13. The biggest hurdle was getting the game ported. In 1993, Midway partnered with Acclaim to bring the game to the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, and both versions of the game came with censorship. Nintendo had the blood turned gray instead of red, and had some of the most violent fatalities removed. Sega, on the other hand, had the gore taken away but left in a code that players could enter to unlock it again. ABACABB -B was etched into the memory of a generation of gamers. The game also had handheld releases for the Game Boy and Game Gear, with similar restrictions on the violent content. The release of these home ports of the game was dubbed Mortal Monday, 
and the game flew off the shelves in record numbers. Critics regard the original Mortal Kombat as one of the greatest games ever made. The developers had initially thought this would be a one and done game, but the wild success meant that a sequel was expected. While gamers were only just getting to grips with the home ports of the first game, the follow-up hit arcades in 1992. The sequel added two gameplay features that were clearly a response to the backlash against the violence in the first game. The fatalities were expanded to give each character in the game several options, including babalities, which bizarrely turned the opponent into a baby version of themselves, instead of coding the level in their insides and friendships, which were strange acts of kindness that could replace the fatalities, including giving gifts, painting a picture of doing a little dance. The friendship required the finishing blow to be a simple kick, before the press of the required combination to initiate the move. These two features were a jab back at those who criticized the first game in the franchise. Whilst players appreciated the sarcastic joke, it's safe to say that fatalities were still the more popular round-ending moves that gamers used. In terms of the other aspects of gameplay, Mortal Kombat 2 took the system from the first game and built upon it. A new crouching punch move was added, low and high kicks became easier to distinguish, and the roundhouse kick became more powerful, knocking the opponent back, and characters had a wider range of moves and combos available. The game also played faster with a quicker recovery time from attacks, making it easy to get in more combos for fast-paced action that was well received by fans. The seven original fighters from Mortal Kombat 1 were joined by several new characters. The fresh faces included Katana, an Adinian princess and assassin, Melina, a clone of Katana with a Tarkadan physiology, Jack Spriggs, a special forces officer known for his powerful cybernetic arms, Baraka, a Tarkatan warrior with lethal arm blades. Kung Lao, a skilled Shaolin monk wielding a razor-sharp hat. And Shang Tsung and Reptile, who were previously non-selectable but became fully playable in the sequel. In the storyline, following his defeat by Liu Kang, the malevolent Shang Tsung implores Shao Kahn, ruler of Outworld, to hold the next tournament in Outworld. Kahn agrees rejuvenating Shang Tsung and inviting Earthrealm's warriors to compete. Raiden, Earthrealm's protector, leads his fighters to Outworld. Liu Kang emerges victorious again, defeating Shao Kahn and Kintaro. The game offers alternate endings for each character in its story mode, and it establishes that the original Sub-Zero was slain by Scorpion, with his younger brother taking up the Sub-Zero mantle. In 1994, the game was ported to home systems in the same way the first game was. Sega added some unique animations for the Genesis release, and this time, Nintendo decided to include more of the violent content, as the first game hadn't sold well with the censorship. In its first week of release, it made $50 million, surpassing the first week revenues of iconic movies such as Forrest Gump, The Lion King, and The Mask. Critics hold the second installment of the Mortal Kombat series as highly as the first, with the two releases regarded amongst the greatest video games of all time. Again, the team at Midway didn't rest on their laurels, and work went ahead on a third installment that would follow in 1995. The third game hit arcades in 1995, and if Mortal Kombat 2 had a reputation for being fast-paced, its sequel made things even faster by introducing a run action and a stamina meter that depleted when running or making combos. This was a response to players feeling the defending player had an advantage in Mortal Kombat 2. There were also new chain combos or dial -a combos, which are sequences of button hits that, once started, can't be stopped until they finish. Some of these combos end with moves like uppercuts that launch opponents into the air for more damage with follow-up hits. They even added a Choose Your Destiny screen for different difficulty levels to suit all kinds of players. For the first time, the game had interactive levels where characters could uppercut each other through the ceiling, shifting the fight to a different stage and changing up the level cycle. This would happen with normal uppercuts or certain special moves like Kung Lao's World Wind Spin. But if someone gets knocked out by an uppercut, the level doesn't change. Another feature called Animality was introduced, 
allowing players to transform into animals to defeat their opponents. To execute an animality, players needed to perform a mercy, another new feature which allowed players to restore a small portion of the opponent's health after winning two rounds. Once the opponent was defeated again, the player could trigger an animality. Additionally, three new stage fatalities were available in the subway, bell tower, and pit three environments. The roster also expanded with the introduction of several new playable characters. This included Cyrax, a yellow-clad Lin Kuei cyber assassin, Cabal, a former black dragon warrior known for his superhuman speed and hook swords, Nightwolf, a Native American shaman with spiritual powers, Sector, a red-clad Lin Kuei cybernetic warrior utilizing advanced technology, Shiva, a formidable four-armed Shokan warrior, and Sindel, the Queen of Adenia, proficient in sonic screams and acrobatic combat techniques. Mortal Kombat 3 also advanced the storyline more than its two predecessors. Shao Kahn's ancient plan to merge Earthrealm with Outer World unfolds, threatening a catastrophic soul-stripping merger. Raiden, limited in his Outworld power, guides chosen warriors to confront Khan. With Khan's defeat, Earthrealm is restored amid intertwined subplots. Liu Kang rebels against Khan to save Katana's realm. Sub-Zero and Smoke resist Lin Kuei's soulless machine conversion, joining the fight. Jax inadvertently frees Kano, leading Sonya, Jax, and Cabal to prepare against Outworld. Shiva suspects betrayal, plotting against Khan, while Cabal seeks vengeance. Survivors like Stryker and Nightwolf join forces, and Johnny Cage falls victim to Khan's extermination squad, seemingly by Motaro. This marked a change in how the narrative was progressed. Before, it had been a single story that only affected certain characters, regardless which fighter they selected. Now, all the characters were beginning to be fleshed out and given their own story arcs. The game was ported to consoles, and this time, Sony paid Midway 16 million US dollars to get the 32-bit version of the game exclusively on its PlayStation console. This version was as close to the arcade as you could get at home. The handheld release on the Game Boy, however, was limited with fewer characters, levels, and none of the gore available to home consoles. The game had simply become too much for the handheld devices of the time. The price Sony paid was reflective of the IP how popular it had become, and Mortal Kombat 3 became the best-selling video game in the US in 1995, as well as being the most popular arcade game. However, several characters, including the legendary Scorpion, considered the mascot of the series, were left out in favor of less popular new faces like Stryker. Midway decided to diversify gameplay by minimizing the ninja-type characters. Fans and critics did not like this move and it led Midway to make a drastic move and re-release the game with changes made to fix the things players disliked. Midway's response to the criticisms leveled at Mortal Kombat 3 was Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. The biggest challenge was the return of Scorpion and the other ninja-type characters that had been left out of Mortal Kombat 3, which was the main sticking point for fans with that game. UMK3 also introduced new combo moves, stage fatalities, and finishing moves, enriching the gameplay with increased fighting variety. Balancing adjustments and refined gameplay mechanics aimed to enhance game balance compared to the initial Mortal Kombat 3 release were also introduced. Additionally, the game featured added stages, revamped stage backgrounds, and visual enhancements, delivering an updated and visually stimulating experience in the game's environments. A new combat code was added to unlock even more content including a classic Sub-Zero. There was also a new character introduced, Ermac. Rumors had been circulating that there was a secret character that existed within the game code of the first few Mortal Kombat releases, due to a repeating message that contained the word Ermac that appeared in certain menus. Ed Boon confirmed eventually that this was simply a shortened down term, Error Macro, that was part of the game code. Midway decided to add to the intrigue by making Ermac a bonafide character in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. He's a ninja character, and his backstory reflects the rumors around the character. The AI was also improved between Mortal Kombat 3 and the Ultimate version. It released in 1995, 
and was well received. The wrongs from Mortal Kombat 3 had been put right, and even though it was, on the whole, the same game, the updates and upgrades made it a better experience. This was the last Mortal Kombat game that Ed Boon coded himself, and is the developer's favorite title in the 2D era of Mortal Kombat. The next title would head straight to home gaming consoles, rather than arcades, something that had never happened before. The game was also ported to the Game Boy Advance as Mortal Kombat Advance in 2001, but it simply didn't hold up on the small handheld device. The limitations of the GBA meant this version of the game, which Midway hoped would be the perfect blend of the first three Mortal Kombat titles in a handheld package, received poor to middling reviews. Mortal Kombat Trilogy, released in 1996, expanded on Mortal Kombat 3 with new features like the Aggressor Bar, granting increased speed and attack power. It introduced extra moves for characters, including Sub-Zero censored Spine Rip Fatality. Trilogy also introduced the Brutality Finishing move, although Brutality moves were also in the Genesis and SNES versions of Ultimate Mortal Kombat, Trilogy actually came out the day before. The roster was an amalgamation of characters from various Mortal Kombat games. MKT also featured two secret characters depending on the version. In most versions, Chameleon, a semi-transparent ninja, cycled rapidly through various male ninjas during combat, while the Nintendo 64 version replaced Chameleon with Chameleon, who transitioned between female ninjas. The game was ported for PC, PlayStation, Nintendo 64, and the Sega Saturn. But Sega's console didn't get the game until around a year after its initial release. This was the culmination of everything Midway had built with a trilogy of releases. Four if you count Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, bringing everything forward with new features and the best parts from the first three titles, direct to people's living rooms. How the game was received depended very much on region and platform, with some releases not living up to the lofty standards people expected from a Mortal Kombat game and some versions of the game given an almost perfect rating. The following year, it was time to move away from the initial trilogy, and from the plots of Mortal Kombat 3, which had basically remained unchanged for the last three releases. Mortal Kombat 4 hit arcades in 1997 and store shelves in 1998, and was a direct sequel to Mortal Kombat 3. In the fourth game, Gameplay largely maintained the series' familiar mechanics using the run button, combos, and 3D graphics while confining characters to a 2D path, excluding sidestepping. A significant addition was the limited weapon system that allowed each character to wield a special weapon via specific button combinations. These weapons, primarily activated using punch buttons, offered diverse attack styles like swinging, clubbing, or throwing. Characters had the ability to intentionally drop weapons, and if an opponent's weapon fell, it could be retrieved and used. Mortal Kombat 4 also introduced a maximum damage cap to prevent infinite combos in the combo system, although this cap could be bypassed with a code. Concerning finishing moves, characters in Mortal Kombat 4 had two fatalities each and access to two stage fatalities specific to certain arenas, involving the act of throwing opponents to their demise. The storyline of the Mortal Kombat universe was also moved forward with this release. Centuries prior to the events of the initial Mortal Kombat game, Shinnok, an elder god controlling realms in the Mortal Kombat universe, aimed to conquer all six realms. Raiden, the Thunder God, engaged in a long-lasting battle against Shinnok, eventually defeating him and banishing him to the Nether Realm for eternity. However, with aid from the sorcerer Quan Chi, Shinnok escapes from the Nether Realm, driven by a desire for revenge against the Elder Gods who exiled him. Initially seizing control of Adenia with the help of a traitor, Tanya, Shinnok readies himself to confront the Elder Gods. To thwart Shinnok's impending threat, Raiden seeks assistance from the Earth Realm warriors who previously saved the realms from Emperor Shao Kahn in earlier installments. In Mortal Kombat 4, Several characters are introduced or make their first playable appearances. Fujin, Raiden's ally and the Wind God. Jarek, the last member of the Black Dragon following Kano's presumed demise. Kai, 
a Shaolin monk and Liu Kang's friend. Quan Shi, the enigmatic sorcerer aiding Shinnok's escape from the Netherrealm, revealing his role in manipulating Scorpion and Sub-Zero against each other. Raiko, an assassin serving as Shinnok's general. Shinnok, a fallen elder god who is both a playable character and the final boss. And Hanya, a betrayer to Adenia. Alongside these new faces, all the classic characters from the initial trilogy also appear. The game was ported to the N64, PC, and PlayStation by Eurocom and to the Game Boy Color by Digital Eclipse. At the start of the release road trip that Midway held for the arcade release, the criticisms from the mainstream media about the game's violent content resurfaced. This time, Midway hit back, with Ed Boon responding that Mortal Kombat 4 was getting so much criticism because it was popular, and that there were more violent games out there. The game's move to 3D modeling while still retaining the classic 2D combat that defined the game and genre, meant that Mortal Kombat 4 was yet another hit. A revised edition of Mortal Kombat 4, known as Mortal Kombat Gold, was created by Eurocom and debuted in 1999 alongside the Sega Dreamcast launch. This version boasted extra characters like Baraka, Syrax, Katana, Melina, Kung Lao, and the secret character Sector, and new stages, along with an innovative weapon selection feature. In the same year as Mortal Kombat 4, the first ever non-fighting game in the series was released. Mortal Kombat Mythologies Sub-Zero is a side-scrolling action-adventure game developed by Midway Games. Released in 1997 for various gaming platforms including PlayStation, Nintendo 64, and Sega Saturn. While it was a side-scrolling action-adventure game, the gameplay actually mirrored the classic Mortal Kombat fighting game style. Players controlled Sub-Zero using buttons for attacks, blocks, and special moves. The gathered experience points by executing combos, enhancing abilities, and restoring health and power using collected items. Progress was tracked through passwords as they navigated through levels, retrieved key items, and managed an ice meter to execute special moves. The plot serves as a prequel to the original Mortal Kombat. Sub-Zero, hired by Quan Chi, stole a map of elements from a Shaolin temple, culminating in a battle with Scorpion, whom he defeated, and the rivalry between the Lin Kuei and Shirai Ryu clan being eradicated. On Quan Chi's orders, Sub-Zero journeyed to the Temple of Elements to retrieve an amulet thought to hold sentimental value, only to uncover its true significance as the power source for the fallen Elder God, Shinnok. Raiden sent Sub-Zero to the Nether Realm to recover the amulet, facing accusations from the undead specter Scorpion for the destruction of his clan. Sub-Zero defeated Quan Chi's allies and eventually Quan Chi himself, securing the amulet, facing Shinnok, and either defeating the Elder God or escaping through a portal, delivering the amulet to Raiden. Upon returning to the Lin Kuei headquarters, Sub-Zero was invited by Shang Tsung to participate in the Mortal Kombat tournament. Mortal Kombat Mythologies Sub-Zero received mixed reviews, with some praising its attempt to expand the lore of the series but criticizing aspects of its gameplay, such as its difficulty level and control mechanics. Mortal Kombat Special Forces was released in 2000 for the PlayStation. It was intended to expand the Mortal Kombat franchise beyond its traditional fighting game roots into the action-adventure genre. The game revolved around Jax, a Special Forces operative known for his cybernetic arms, on a mission to take down Kano and the Black Dragon organization. Players navigated through various levels, engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat, solving puzzles, and performing platforming elements. However, Mortal Kombat Special Forces received mostly negative reviews and faced criticism for its lackluster gameplay, dated graphics, awkward controls, and overall poor execution compared to other games in the Mortal Kombat series. It failed to meet the expectations of both critics and fans, contributing to its reputation as one of the weaker entries in the franchise. It would be three years until the next release in the series. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance would hit consoles in 2002. This was the first time an MK game had gone straight to console without an arcade release. 
it was available on Xbox, PlayStation 2, and GameCube. The game marked a shift in gameplay by granting each character three unique fighting styles, allowing fluid transitions between hand-to-hand -hand and weapon-based combat. With a reduction in character-specific special moves, the emphasis was placed on mastering the improved fighting system. The game's 3D movements enabled greater mobility within the arena, while invisible boundaries prevented fighters from leaving. Character models reflected more realism, showcasing movements and limited interactions with the environment, such as destructible obstacles in certain levels. The game featured a single fatality per character, excluding stage fatalities except for a unique acid-related feature in one level. The introduction of the Conquest mode served as both a tutorial and storyline expansion, guiding players through character-specific missions and earning in-game currency known as coins. The crypt housed numerous unlockables, including characters, arenas, costumes, videos and concept sketches, rewarding players for completing missions. The game also revived Test Your Might and Test Your Sight minigames for additional challenges and coin rewards. In the plot, Scorpion's canon ending at the end of Mortal Kombat 4 reveals his vengeful act against Quan Chi, taking him to the Nether Realm. However, Quan Chi manages to escape using a stolen amulet and discovers an army's remains belonging to the Dragon King, seeking to revive it. Teaming up with Shang Tsung, they aim to create an unstoppable force by transplanting defeated warrior souls into the army. Together, they eliminate powerful threats like Shao Kahn and Liu Kang. Raiden, restrained as an elder god, abandons his status, realizing Earthrealm's impending doom should the Deadly Alliance succeed. Deadly Alliance delves into character backgrounds and connections via the Conquest mode and Crypt biographies, unfolding within the Mortal Kombat realms. The narrative spans from the Nether Realm to Outworld, Adenia, and Earthrealm. Understanding the full storyline takes the completion of both Conquest and Arcade modes, with the latter offering character-specific endings, though only a few align with the official Mortal Kombat continuity. Several endings actually diverge or conflict with each other. This game and storyline brought with it the introduction of a large number of fresh characters for the players to get to grips with. We got Blaze, a colossal fire element, guards the Dragon King's egg as a secret character. Bo Rai Cho, an upbeat native of Outworld and former mentor to Liu Kang, joins the lineup. Jamin, a vengeful Netherrealm Oni, seeks retribution against Quan Chi for abandoning him. Frost, Sub-Zero's ambitious apprentice, lacks humility. Su Hao, a Red Dragon operative, infiltrates the OIA with the intent to destroy it. Kenshi, a blind swordsman stranded in Outworld after an OIA mission, wields his blade skillfully despite his blindness. Li Mei, an Outworld native enslaved by the Deadly Alliance, enters a tournament in hopes of freeing her people. Mavado, a Red Dragon mastermind, orders Shu Hao's infiltration and confronts Cabal. Mocap, a joke character playing tribute to Midway artist Carlos Pacina, appears as a nod to motion capture work in the game. Moloch serves as Drawman's companion and the game's sub-boss, while Natara, a cunning vampiress, aims to liberate her realm from Outworld's control. Most of the classic Mortal Kombat character roster was also present, although this was the first time Liu Kang wasn't playable in a main series title. To boost the game's publicity, the American rock band Edema produced a track named Immortal specifically for the game, and they created a music video featuring Scorpion. This song featured in numerous commercials for the game, and the music video was included in the game's additional content, along with a brief live clip from Adima's performance at the 2002 Electronic Entertainment Expo. Upon its debut, the game achieved remarkable sales figures, surpassing 350,000 units within 9 days, reaching 1 million in its initial month, and exceeding 1.3 million units by January 2003. In a retrospective by Dunham on IGN, it was noted that Deadly Alliance swiftly garnered favor among both critics and fans, receiving the best reviews in the series since Mortal Kombat 2 and hitting the million copy mark within six weeks of release. Over time, the game more than doubled its initial sales figure.
After the initial release of Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance on Game Boy Advance, a further edition titled Mortal Kombat Tournament Edition launched on August 25th, 2003. This updated version reintroduced the remaining playable characters not included in the first release, where only Quan Chi and Shang Tsung made their appearance. Additionally, three exclusive characters, Noob Saibot, Serena, and Sector were introduced in this game. Released in 2004, Mortal Kombat Deception marks the sixth installment in the renowned Mortal Kombat series. It upheld the familiar 2D fighting mechanics while introducing new elements and modes to the gameplay. One key addition was the Combo Breaker feature, allowing players to escape extended combos. It also included innovative game modes like Chess Combat, where players use chess pieces to battle on a chessboard, and Puzzle Combat. Notably, Deception was among the early Mortal Kombat titles to introduce online play, enabling gamers to engage in multiplayer battles over the internet. The game also featured a story-driven conquest mode, providing players with an explorative journey through realms and quests, expanding the game's lore. As always, several new characters joined the roster, each with their unique combat styles and backgrounds. Shujinko, the main protagonist of the game, possessed an adaptive fighting style that allowed him to mimic various warriors' moves. Hotaru, a Sidon guardsman, employed a disciplined and rigid fighting technique that reflected his law enforcement background. Darius, a revolutionary from the realm of Order Realm, utilized a street-style brawling combat method combined with agility and speed. Returning characters included classics like Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Raiden, and Johnny Cage, each retaining their signature fighting styles and special moves. Fan favorites like Molina, Ermac, and Baraka also made a comeback, showcasing their distinct abilities in battle. Several characters from previous titles were omitted in Deception. Notably, characters like Cyrax, Sector, and Noob Saibot were absent from the playable roster. In terms of the storyline, Deception continued from Deadly Alliance depicting the aftermath of a conflict where warriors were slain, leading to an alliance between Shang Tsung and Quan Chi. It introduced new characters like Shu Jinko, a young martial artist caught in the struggle between Earthrealm's warriors and the Dragon King, Onaga. The narrative centered on Shu Jinko's quest to collect artifacts at the behest of the manipulative sorcerer, Damashi, unwittingly contributing to the revival of Onaga, the powerful Dragon King. Mortal Kombat Deception was initially released in October 2004 for PlayStation 2 and Xbox platforms. Later, a Nintendo GameCube version was released in February 2005. The reaction to Mortal Kombat Deception was generally quite positive, mainly due to its fresh gameplay features, diverse game modes, and the inclusion of online multiplayer for the first time. The franchise would again swerve away from the fighting genre in 2005, with another side release. Mortal Kombat Unchained was the portable version of Mortal Kombat Deception made for the PlayStation Portable by Just Games Interactive. It released in North America on November 13, 2006, and later in Europe and Australia. This version included all GameCube characters plus four exclusive characters, Blaze, Frost, Jax, and Katana, from Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. These four had limited finisher moves, unique to their previous appearances. Unchained introduced an endurance mode and allowed multiplayer via the PSP's wireless ad hoc network. Previously hidden characters were automatically unlocked in Unchained, showcasing the challenging to obtain characters from Deception. While developed by Just Games Interactive, Midway contributed by assisting in code optimization and Wi-Fi integration to maintain a high frame rate. Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks was an action-adventure game released in 2005 for PlayStation 2 and Xbox. It diverged from the traditional one-on-one -on -one fighting style of the Mortal Kombat series, offering a cooperative third-person beat-em-up experience set in the Mortal Kombat universe. The game primarily followed Liu Kang and Kung Lao, two iconic characters from the series, on a quest to defeat Shang Tsung and his horde of minions. Players explored various locations, encountered familiar Mortal Kombat characters, and engaged in fast-paced combat, 
incorporating the franchise's signature fatalities and other finishing moves. Featuring cooperative gameplay, Shaolin Monks allowed two members to join forces in the campaign, enhancing the experience and enabling tag team moves. The game also provided secrets to discover, collectibles to find, and unlockable content that included extra characters and outfits. Reception for Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks was generally positive. Critics and fans praised its cooperative gameplay, combat system, nostalgic appeal, and faithful representation of the Mortal Kombat lore. However, some reviews mentioned occasional camera issues and technical glitches as drawbacks to an otherwise enjoyable gaming experience. Overall, it is remembered fondly by many players as a unique and engaging installment in the Mortal Kombat franchise. Released in 2006 for PlayStation 2 and Xbox, Mortal Kombat Armageddon marked the seventh installment of the series. It's known for its extensive roster, featuring every character from the series up to that point. Additionally, it introduced a creative fighter feature, allowing players to design their own combatants. Characters possess two distinct fighting styles, one with and one without a weapon, except for certain bosses and characters without a weapon style. New combat systems included air combat, reminiscent of Marvel vs. Capcom's aerial combos, and a parry system akin to Killer Instinct. Notably, the game introduced a unique feature allowing players to create personalized fatalities by inputting a sequence of commands. These custom fatalities replaced the character-specific ones from earlier games and ranged from basic to ultimate, with more inputs earning more in-game currency. However, each input reduced the time for further commands, and certain moves couldn't be repeated within the fatality sequence. The conquest mode blended together aspects from Deception and Shaolin Monks. It revolved around Tavin and Dagon, brothers awakened from suspended animation by their parents due to an impending catastrophe involving the Mortal Kombat warriors. Players controlled Tavin in conquest mode while Dagon allied with adversaries to achieve ultimate godhood by eliminating Tavin and Blaze. During conquest, players collected weapons reminiscent of those in Shaolin Monks and gathered relics tied to various fighters, unlocking rewards and alternate costumes. Completion of conquest mode allowed players to unlock Tavin for arcade play and acquire additional characters like Meat, Dagon, and Blaze by collecting relics. Armageddon also introduced the minigame Motor Combat, which was compared to Mario Kart by Ed Boon in official Xbox Magazine back in September 2006. Each character had their own customized go-kart with unique special moves, continuing the super deformed style introduced in Deception's Puzzle Combat mode. The game featured style-based fatalities and death traps tailored to individual characters. Cars were designed to reflect the personalities and appearances of the characters. For example, Baraka's car paid homage to his forearm blades, while Scorpion's was powered by a fire-breathing skull akin to his toasty fatality. The plot also built to an epic finale. In Adenia, Delia foresees a cataclysmic Mortal Kombat battle. To avert it, Elder God Argus conceals his sons, Tavin and Dagon, in caverns to awaken before the final battle. Tavin is roused in Earthrealm by his dragon, Orin, and learns of a competition against Dagon. Seeking their father, Tavin discovers a message urging them to compete for his Elder God status. Sector captures Tavin, who escapes Takunin, finds armor at his mother's temple, fights the Lin Kuei, and allies with Sub-Zero against the Red Dragon. Tavin confronts Fujin and the Red Dragon, encountering Dagon, now the Red Dragon leader. Dagon reveals his scheme and murders their parents. Karu reveals Dagon's treachery and informs Tavin of Dagon's trip to the Netherrealm. In the Netherrealm, Tavin assists Shinnok and encounters Raiden. Tavin fights through Outworld, faces Quan Chi's allies, and battles Raiden, learning of the corrupted contest. Meeting Blaze, Tavin battles Dagon, but becomes disillusioned until Blaze reveals the quest's true nature. With Armageddon looming, Tavin learns that he and Dagon must defeat Blaze to end the apocalypse. Tavin defeats Dagon and Blaze, expecting to become an elder god, but the outcome defers. Vowing to seek a solution, Tavin swears to prevent Armageddon despite the fighter's increased powers. 
The PlayStation 2 and Xbox versions of Armageddon boasted an extensive roster of 62 fighters, surpassing any prior Mortal Kombat or tournament fighter game. Except for Dagon and Tavin, who were new to the series, the game also marked Serena's first appearance as a playable character on non-portable consoles. Additionally, Meat was introduced as a fully-fledged character for the first time in the Mortal Kombat series. This was the most ambitious Mortal Kombat game to date, and probably one of the most ambitious fighting games ever made. The huge roster was impressive alone, but when you add in the creative fighter mode, along with allowing players to hit any fatalities they wanted, as long as they knew the combo, this was a milestone achievement for a fighter. This was the final main canon Mortal Kombat game that Midway would develop, and was the final game for a generation of consoles. The next title, although not a canon one, would come out on the next-gen consoles. Combining characters from both the Mortal Kombat series with those from DC Comics, Released in 2008 for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, it brought together iconic fighters such as Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and the Joker, alongside Mortal Kombat characters like Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Raiden, and Liu Kang. The game's narrative revolves around a cataclysmic collision between the two universes due to the merging of characters from both worlds. A powerful being named Dark Khan, a fusion of Mortal Kombat Shao Kahn and DC's Darkseid, becomes the primary antagonist. As heroes and villains from both realms clash, they're forced to confront this threat and work together to prevent the destruction of both universes. The gameplay mechanics featured elements from both franchises, blending Mortal Kombat's signature fighting style and fatalities with DC characters' abilities. Each character had unique moves and special attacks. Additionally, the game introduced close combat, a mechanic allowing for close-up hand-to-hand combat sequences during fights. The story mode alternated between the DC Universe and Mortal Kombat characters, offering perspectives from both sides. Players could choose their allegiance and progress through the narrative, unlocking content and experiencing different character interactions. However, due to the game's crossover nature and the need to maintain a T rating, the fatalities were less graphic than in traditional Mortal Kombat games. It made a record for being the most pre-ordered Mortal Kombat game of all time prior to its release. It would be three years before another game would be released in the series, and it would see a complete reboot of the Mortal Kombat narrative. Mortal Kombat, also known as Mortal Kombat 9, released in 2011. It is a reboot of the Mortal Kombat franchise, bringing back the series to its roots and retelling the storyline from the original trilogy. The game offers a blend of classic 2D fighting mechanics with enhanced graphics and modern gameplay features. In this iteration, a prominent addition was the Super Meter, which charged through various in-battle actions like executing special moves or taking hits from opponents. The meter had three levels, each enabling different actions. At the first level, it enhanced a character's special attack. At the second, it interrupted a combo attack, and at the full level, it triggered an X-ray move, showcasing internal views of characters being damaged. The game introduced a multifaceted story mode where players switched between multiple characters, a fatality training mode for practical finishing moves, and the challenge tower with 300 diverse difficulty-specific challenges offering currency rewards. It also featured tag team combat for up to four players, introducing new attacks like Tag Assist and Tag Combo, combining the moves of active and off-screen characters. The online mode had a King of the Hill feature, allowing up to eight spectators to watch and challenge the winner of a fight, with spectators also able to rate fights and discuss moves or combos in a dedicated forum. An online pass was necessary for accessing online components, and there was a PlayStation 3 exclusive 3D display mode that didn't require 3D glasses. It's a retelling of the original storyline, but in this timeline, Raiden tracks back through time to deliver a message to his former self that changes the course of history in the Mortal Kombat universe. In the chaos of the Armageddon War, Raiden's message from the future is intended to guide the past, urging that he must win without providing clarity. 
This cryptic guidance leads Raiden to believe that Liu Kang's success in a tournament is Earth Realm salvation. As the past unfolds, Liu Kang becomes the last hope for Earth Realm, but faces unexpected challenges due to manipulated events that persist, despite Raiden's efforts to alter the course. Shao Kahn, strengthened and ruthless, strikes alliances, revives the dead, and mounts an assault on Earth Realm. Raiden's attempts to seek aid from higher powers are futile, and Earth Realm's champions face tragic fates. Amidst chaos, Raiden's actions unintentionally lead to the death of Liu Kang, forcing Raiden into a final desperate confrontation against Shao Kahn. Raiden, after an unexpected intervention by the Elder Gods, gains immense power and manages to vanquish Shao Kahn, preventing a breach of the Mortal Kombat Code. Despite Earthrealm's survival, Raiden remains oblivious to a hidden conspiracy brewing as Quan Chi aligns with Shinnok, signaling an ominous threat to the realms. Some characters were reintroduced or made their first appearance in the series. These characters included Quan Chi, Kenshi, Scarlet, Cyber Sub-Zero, and Kratos from the God of War series, exclusive to the PlayStation 3 version. The team originally considered Sweet Tooth from Twisted Metal until they decided on Kratos. Freddy Krueger from the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise was also introduced as a guest character in Mortal Kombat 9. A total reboot of the series was an ambitious move, but one that ultimately paid off. It was one of the games of 2011 in renewed interest in the franchise. A sequel to this new beginning was put into development and would hit shelves in 2015 on a new generation of consoles. In August 2011, Mortal Kombat Arcade Edition was released. This collection compiles faithful ports of the initial three games from the Mortal Kombat series, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Retaining the essence of the original arcade versions, these titles offer the classic gameplay, characters, moves, and signature fatalities that define the Mortal Kombat series. Players have the chance to relive the nostalgic fighting action of the early Mortal Kombat games on modern platforms. Available on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Windows PC, the Mortal Kombat Arcade Collection provided fans and newcomers an opportunity to either revisit or explore the origins of this iconic fighting game franchise. The follow-up featured a darker storyline set 25 years after the events of the previous title. Various new gameplay mechanics, including the variation system, were introduced, allowing each character to select different variations offering unique moves and playstyles. Additionally, environmental interactions were more dynamic, enabling fighters to use elements of the surroundings during battles. In addition to the traditional fatalities, Mortal Kombat X introduced two new types of finishing moves. Quitality, instantly eliminating the player's character if they quit during a multiplayer match, and Faction Kills, a series of finishing moves based on the selection of one of the game's five factions, Black Dragon, Brotherhood of Shadow, Lin Kuei, Special Forces, and White Lotus. The game also revived brutality finishing moves, although they differed from those seen in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Brutalities were activated through specific moves, triggered when delivering the final blow in the last round of a fight under specific conditions, resulting in the opponent's death. Furthermore, the game incorporated stage brutalities, activated by using certain environmental interactions to defeat the opponents. Mortal Kombat X featured a mix of both new and returning characters, including Cassie Cage, daughter of Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade, Kotal Khan, Aaron Black, Jackie Briggs, daughter of Jax, and Takeda Takahashi, son of Kenshi. The storyline emphasized the generational clash between the classic characters and the newer generation. Further guest characters were also added. Jason Voorhees from the Friday the 13th film series, Predator, Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Xenomorph from the Alien film franchise. Two years after Shao Kahn's defeat, Shinnok launches an assault on Earthrealm alongside an army of Netherrealm demons and resurrected Earthrealm warriors under Quan Chi's control. A strike team led by Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, and Kenshi heads to Raiden's Sky Temple, witnessing a battle between Raiden, Fujin, and Shinnok. 
Johnny unwittingly unlocks ancient powers while protecting Sonya from Shinnok, allowing Raiden to trap Shinnok inside his amulets. They later pursue Quan Chi to the Nether Realm, restoring Scorpion, Sub Zero, and Jax, and defeating Quan Chi before he escapes again. Over the next two decades, alliances shift and new conflicts arise. Johnny forms a team of young fighters, Cassie, Takeda, Jackie, and Kung Jin, aiming to address conflicts in Outworld. They aid Kotal Khan against Melina, ultimately leading to Melina's execution and the amulet's possession by Kotal. However, Devorah, a double agent, steals the amulet, leading to a complex chain of events where Earthrealm warriors try to prevent Shinnok's resurgence. Jax, Kenshi, and Serena lead an assault in the Nether Realm, capturing Quan Chi and bringing him to Earthrealm. But an unexpected turn allows Shinnok's escape and transformation into a powerful demon. In a decisive battle at the Sky Temple, Cassie, aided by allies, confronts Shinnok, using her newly manifested powers to defeat him. Raiden purifies the Gensi, weakening Shinnok and forcing the Revenants to retreat. Raiden, now corrupted, leaves a warning for the Netherrealm rulers, Liu Kang and Katana, and departs, signifying a precarious future. The game garnered positive reviews for its engaging gameplay, diverse roster, improved graphics, and compelling story mode. Additionally, it introduced downloadable content, DLC characters, such as Jason Voorhees, Predator, and Leatherface from iconic horror franchises, expanding the roster even further. This game was dubbed one of the best fighting games of all time when released, and won Fighter of the Year at almost all the awards it was nominated for. In March 2019, Warner Bros. confirmed that Mortal Kombat X had sold more than 12 million copies worldwide by then. It was the fastest selling game in the franchise and was the ninth best selling retail game of 2015 in the United States. <music> NetherRealm Studio revealed plans to launch on iOS Android version of Mortal Kombat X in April 2015, blending elements of free to play, fighting, and card battler genres. Players would unlock content in the console version by playing the mobile version, encouraging cross-platform interaction. The iOS edition debuted globally on April 7, 2015, while the Android version soft-launched in select Asian nations on April 21, 2015, before its worldwide release on May 4, 2015. The mobile game received multiple updates featuring characters from the franchise. These updates introduced various Mortal Kombat Universe personalities, Freddy Krueger, Jade, Baraka, Takeda, Tremor, Goro, Shao Kahn, Bo Raicho, Kintaro, and Leatherface. A significant 2.0 update in February 2019, aimed at aligning with Mortal Kombat 11, brought substantial improvements and changed the game's name to Mortal Kombat Mobile. This update also elevated the game's visual experience by upgrading the graphics engine from Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 4. Whilst the game wasn't regarded as a flop, it isn't a hugely memorable installment in this storied franchise. Four years after Mortal Kombat X, Netherrealm would return with the 11th installment in the Mortal Kombat franchise, which is yet another award-winning, universally adored game in the series. The unveiling of the game occurred during the Game Awards 2018, and it officially launched in North America and Europe on April 23, 2019, accessible on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Windows, and Xbox One platforms. The gameplay continued the established trend of 2.5D fighting present in its predecessors, including Mortal Kombat Mobile, alongside classic finishers like Fatalities, Brutalities, and Stage Fatalities, the game introduced new features like Fatal Blows and Crushing Blows. Fatal Blows served as impactful moves, similar to the X-Ray moves from previous games, dealing substantial damage but activating only when a player's health dropped below 30%, and they were usable just once per match. Crushing Blows, on the other hand, were enhanced versions of specific moves, triggered under specific conditions, inflicting severe injuries and potentially draining up to 30% of the opponent's health in a single strike. Additionally, the game presented the flawless block mechanic, granting a counter opportunity after a well-timed block, and a returning feature called Mercy. 
allowing the winning player to grant their opponent a small health boost after the finish him or her prompt. A new customization aspect, the custom variation feature debuted in Mortal Kombat 11, resembling the gear system seen in Injustice 2, but it enhanced the variation system used in Mortal Kombat X. Each character arrived with an initial assortment of skins, gear, and moves, which players could further personalize. Notably, unlike in Injustice 2, the appearance of characters in Mortal Kombat 11 didn't affect their abilities, giving players the freedom to create custom move lists irrespective of their character's appearance. Mortal Kombat 11 introduced several fresh characters to its roster, broadening the diverse cast. Among these newcomers were Garrus, a formidable servant of Kronika blessed with time manipulation and immense strength. Cetrion, the Earth Realm's elder goddess of virtue, commanded the forces of nature's elements. Collector, resembling the Shokan species with his four arms, collected tribute for Shao Kahn. Kronika herself emerged as the game's primary antagonist, the keeper of time controlling the very fabric of temporal existence. Their inclusion added unique dynamics and abilities to the roster, expanding the game's lore and combat styles. As had become tradition by now, guest characters were added to the game. This time, players got John Rambo in the image of the iconic Sylvester Stallone, the Terminator in the image of Arnold, Robocop and Spawn from the 1997 movie based on an image comics title. The Joker, who had already appeared in Mortal Kombat vs. the DC Universe, returned in this game too. However, the game faced criticism due to the absence of beloved characters from previous installments, causing disappointments among segments of the player base. Missing from the initial roster were iconic figures like Melina, a long-standing character in the series, alongside other favorites such as Smoke, Airmac, and Reptile. Fans deeply connected to these characters over the years felt a palpable void in this lineup. Despite this initial absence, subsequent downloadable content and post-release updates gradually reintroduced some of these beloved characters. Although not all of them made a return, easing the sense of absence for devoted fans to some extent. The narrative continues after Shinnok's defeat at the end of Mortal Kombat X. Dark Raiden decides to protect Earthrealm by eliminating its enemies, beheading Shinnok in an act that captures the attention of Kronika, the Timekeeper. Kronika aims to undo Raiden's interference by altering history and erasing him. Sonya Blade's team attacks the Netherrealm, losing Sonya in the process. Kronika allies with Liu Kang, Katana, and Netherrealm's rulers to achieve her goals. A time storm brings past versions of many characters, creating chaos. Total Khan faces interruptions during an execution and a battle erupts. Devora recruits fighters for Kronika's cause. Raiden, Liu Kang, and Kong Lao unite with Kotal, while Katana and Jade assist in defending Outworld. Garrus, possessing chronokinetic powers, steals energy capsules holding Earthrealm's life force. Sector rebuilds the Cyber Kin Kuei for Kronika, leading to clashes with Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Raiden discovers Cetrian's betrayal of the Elder Gods and her allegiance to Kronika. As battles unfold, heroes unite, attempting to thwart Kronika's plans. Cassie leads a mission to rescue her parents. Sonya kills young Kano to erase his present self, and Katana blinds Shao Kahn. Raiden consults with the Elder Gods but faces challenges due to the Time Storm. Characters encounter betrayals and engagements while forming alliances. Jax and Jackie aim to retrieve the Crown of Souls, but challenges arise involving deception and manipulation. After Kronika's defeat, an expansion named Aftermath sees Liu Kang and Raiden struggling with using the Hourglass. Shang Tsung, Fujin, and Nightwolf aim to retrieve the Crown of Souls to prevent history's destruction. Their actions lead to conflicts, betrayals, and a battle for control over time. As the story unfolds, players witness various outcomes based on choices made during crucial battles, eventually setting the stage for Mortal Kombat 1, which is primarily set within Liu Kang's timeline, as multiple timelines emerge due to the final battle's impact on the fabric of time. Mortal Kombat 11 garnered positive reviews overall on Metacritic, an aggregator of reviews. IGN lauded the game for its slower combat pace compared to its predecessor, expanded tutorial, improved netcode, and an engaging story mode. However, 
IGN criticized the prolonged progression and the unlock system for customization, labeling it as excessively gimmicky and demanding. GameSpot, awarding the game a 9 out of 10, praised the game's accessible, deep, and thrilling fighting system, along with the captivating story mode. Nevertheless, GameSpot expressed disapproval for the mandatory online connectivity for progression and the randomization of rewards within the crypt. Fans wondered where the studio would take the franchise and the story after Mortal Kombat 11. In 2023, they got their answer, and it was another reboot. Mortal Kombat 1 was the title of the new reboot. It functions as both a reboot and a sequel to Mortal Kombat 11. Released on September 19th, 2023 for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, Windows, and Xbox Series XS, this game introduced a fresh narrative timeline, directly stemming from Liu Kang's actions in the aftermath of Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal Kombat 1 introduces diverse gameplay features encompassing a story mode, online multiplayer using rollback netcode, and offline play. One notable addition is the Cameo Fighter system, where distinct characters offer support during fights. These Cameo Fighters, separate from the main roster, provide summons or ambushes, impacting both the player's moves and health, and can execute their own fatalities and brutalities. Fatal Blows from Mortal Kombat 11 return with a twist. They now execute as cooperative offensive moves between a player and a cameo fighter when health drops below 30%. This collaborative strike is emphasized by X-ray effects reminiscent of Mortal Kombat X. Additionally, the game resurrects the air combat combo system seen in Mortal Kombat Armageddon and Shaolin Monks. For single player engagements, Mortal Kombat 1 reinstates the story mode in Classic Towers mode along with a new addition called the Seasonal Invasion Mode. This online mode blends fighting mechanics with board game and role-playing elements, prompting players to navigate the board, complete challenges, and earn rewards such as skins, in-game currency, or concept art. Each invasion season, lasting about six weeks, introduces a unique board and theme. Multiplayer options include local, online, and tournament modes, catering to various playstyles and competitive settings. The base roster boasts 22 reimagined playable characters from the series' history, reviving figures not seen since Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Shang Tsung was initially available as a pre-order incentive, with six more characters, including guest ones, set for post-release through the Combat Pack downloadable content. Alongside these fighters, a unique addition called Cameo Fighters enhances gameplay by offering assistance during matches. The game starts with 15 Cameo Fighters, with plans for an extra five to be added via downloadable content. These characters can be chosen independently from the primary fighter roster, and certain individuals can function both as main roster fighters and cameo fighters, including the option for guest characters to serve in this supportive role. The new guest characters available to players in Mortal Kombat 1 are Omni-Man from the hit animated show Invincible, which is fittingly violent, Homelander from the similarly gory The Boys, and Peacemaker, played by John Cena in the DC Universe. In the story, after feeding Kronika and Shang Tsung, Fire God Liu Kang uses the Hourglass to reshape the universe before leaving control to Garrus and becoming Earthrealm's protector. He forms an alliance with Outworld, initiating a new Mortal Kombat tournament. Shang Tsung, now powerless, is approached by Damashi, a figure revealing forces working against him. Liu Kang assembles a team consisting of Kung Lao, Raiden, Johnny Cage, and Kenshi for the tournament. Upon learning Shang Tsung's resurgence, Kenshi, Kung Lao, and Johnny investigate, encountering Tarkatans and stopping Shang Tsung's dark experiments. Melina, affected by the Tarkat virus, attacks, leading to a capture by Outworld's leaders. They escape and discover Quan Chi's sinister plans. Liu Kang sends Sub-Zero, Scorpion, and Smoke to destroy the Soul Stealers. Still, Sub-Zero falls under Shang Tsung's influence, prompting Liu Kang to return to Outworld with Li Mei's aid to expose the Sorcerer's treachery. With evidence revealed, an alliance is formed to stop the Soul Stealers. Ermac's defeat grants Melina control, allowing Emperor Jared's soul to manifest. 
Damashi unveils his true identity as the previous timeline Shang Tsung, revealing their battle fractured time and created a separate timeline. A fierce confrontation leads to the death of Sindel, Jared taking Melina's soul and a plan to confront Titan Shang Tsung. Titan Shang Tsung summons an evil army, but Liu Kang gains Titan powers and allies from another timeline. A climactic battle ensues, ending with Liu Kang erasing Titan Shang Tsung in his timeline. Liu Kang returns everyone to their timelines, prepares Earthrealm for future conflicts, and founds the Shirai Ryu clan with Scorpion and Smoke. In a mid credit scene, Titan Havik seeks a prolonged battle after observing Liu Kang's battle. Liu Kang covertly watches over multiple timelines, defending his own. In alternate timelines, Scorpion seeks his lost love, and a legion of vampires aims to enslave all timelines, posing a significant threat to Liu Kang's allies before a heroic Nitara helps restore them. During August 2013, Dave Bautista starred in a trailer paying homage to the original Mortal Kombat's Mortal Monday commercial from 1993. In the subsequent month, it was disclosed that actress Megan Fox would provide the voice for Nitara. The Nintendo Switch version was critically panned upon release for its poor graphical quality, extensive load times, poor performance, and numerous bugs. This mirrors the reception for many performance-intense games on Switch, with the platform not being the best at handling full-power versions of larger games. Overall, the game has been scored at over 80% on Metacritic, and the 8 or 9 out of 10 ratings given by most gaming institutions, including Eurogamer, despite the failings of the Nintendo Switch port of the game. The success of a second reboot shows the staying power of this franchise, but the studio weren't done there. They released a further mobile game only a month after Mortal Kombat 1 released. Mortal Kombat Onslaught released on October 17, 2023, marks a departure from the traditional fighting game format of the Mortal Kombat series. Developed by NetherRealm Studios, it represents the fourth installment that ventures beyond the fighting genre, blending combat gameplay with an immersive cinematic storyline akin to free-to-play mobile multiplayer online battle arena games. The game initially underwent location testing starting from October 31, 2022. The game features 50 of the franchise's impressive roster of fighters for players to use in-game, including Sub-Zero and Scorpion, two of the most iconic characters in Mortal Kombat history. In discussing the game's development, Ed Boon emphasized the aim to explore new dimensions within Mortal Kombat while preserving its fundamental raw essence. Boon highlighted, We are pushing the boundaries of Mortal Kombat to allow players to experience the franchise in new ways while still staying true to its core visceral nature. With Mortal Kombat Onslaught, we reimagined Mortal Kombat into a strategic team-based collection with fast-paced group melee combat that both new and existing fans can enjoy. So, there we have it. Which was the first Mortal Kombat game you played? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed our rundown of the evolution of Mortal Kombat, drop a like on the video and check out our channel for more gaming evolution content. Remember, we're your one-stop shop for all gaming evolution stories. So subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you don't miss another video. See you next time.